In this video, I wanna walk you through a very basic approach to reading a chess CT. And we'll go into more detail in the future on actually the individual parts of it and individual organs, but this is gonna be a broad overview. For more educational resources like our HP notebooks, check out medicalbasics.com. So before we even open up the CT scan, you always want to go back to the chest x-ray, see if there's any major abnormalities, see what exactly you may be looking for. Every CT scan as well should have some type of scout imaging, so you also have some basic x-ray as well. So here, besides this rib fracture, there's really not much else that we may be looking for, but that will give us a good indication in terms of what we should be uh, identifying on a CT scan. So first things first, you can start off with the coronal. Um, I'll talk very briefly about the coronal because uh, I want to show you on an axio. The only reason why I brought up the coronal is, you know, like with any other CT scan, this is oftentimes for clinicians the easiest way to visualize things because it looks very similar to a chest x-ray, at least in the same plane. So. Very simply, uh, w w what I can show you is, the good thing about the, the coronal is you can kind of get a broad overview in terms of are there any uh, major uh, pneumothoraces. Um, sometimes it can kind of help with rib fractures, although that's going to be much easier to see on an axial plane. And you can also look at some of these vessels a little bit better on coronal. Sagittal is also going to be very good when you're looking at bones specifically, the vertebral bodies, as well as some of the vasculature as well, especially if you're looking for a dissection. Or, or things of that nature. And aneurysms are good to be able to measure here rather than on uh, an axial plane, uh, just because you can oftentimes be fooled depending on how the patient's uh, positioned. So here, really not much. You have these tiny pneumothoraces right here and here bilaterally, really not of much consequence. And we'll see all the other things on the axial in just a second. So when we pull up the axial, what we're pretty much going to do with every scan, I'm just going to kind of broadly look at things, see if there's anything that really stands out in terms of abnormalities. And, you know, it's kind of similar to when you had the chest x-ray. You want to see if there's any gross abnormalities so you can kind of key in on those things. We saw that there was a rib fracture, a first rib fracture. So we're going to be looking for things like pneumothoraces, any type of lung contusion, things like that. I won't go into the pathology so much for this one. It really is just in terms of uh, grossly. So I'll look through it a few times kind of going in quadrants so one two three four go up and down in each time looking in a different section then i'll do the same thing uh, with the lungs so I'll, I'll kind of be looking up going down and then this time instead of just four sections i'll break it into three three on each side so one two three kind of in your uh, anterior middle and posterior so go up and down up and down and i'll do that on each side and i'll just do this really quickly to just try to see if there's anything that really stands out then after that what i'll do is i'll actually go by individual body systems if there's nothing that is extremely important that needs to be acted on immediately then what i'll do is i'll go by organ systems so first things first you're going to look, want to look at the thyroid so that's this guy right here are there any major masses um, are there any major lesions um, that you're seeing here next we'll go on to the heart and the mediastinum just kind of getting a sense of things this right here is kind of going to be your uh, your right atrium right ventricle left atrium left ventricle just to kind of get your, yourself oriented to how everything looks this is going to be um, our ascending aorta this is going to be our, our main pulmonary artery into our right and left pulmonary artery and this is going to be our svc um, all of our subclavian vessels are going to come in here so these were your subclavian veins, I should say, and this is going to be your internal juggler uh, vein. And then here, since this is our aorta, well, when we go up, we're going to see our right brachiocephalic. This is going to be our subclavian artery um, rather than vein. Um, and then uh, this guy right here, so the brachiocephalic has the subclavian, also has the uh, common carotid, and so that's going to be that right there. Subclavian will also, as it branches out, this is going to be our vert. So I'm just kind of going through these very quickly, but uh, I'll go into more detail later. There's similar anatomy on the other side. 
with some slight modifications so here you really what you're looking for is are you looking for any type of major aneurysm what are the sizes of the aorta is there any dissection and then also the pulmonary artery is there any evidence of pulmonary hypertension and any any thrombus or occlusion of any of these veins or arteries so that's kind of roughly what i'll do with the heart you can kind of look at the general size of it as well and look at each of the individual ventricles and also the atrium, whether or not those are specifically enlarged. At the same time, although this is not the proper sequence for uh, pulmonary embolism, doesn't mean that you won't be able to pick up pulmonary emboli. So I'll have an entire video on actually how to approach all the vessels uh, to really look for these PEs, because uh, there is a certain way to make it just a lot quicker and a lot more efficient. But essentially, all you're going to do is go through every single one of the pulmonary vessels and making sure that they're all pulmonary arteries rather than the veins. So like I was saying, this these are going to be the pulmonary veins. So these guys that are coming in here into the left atrium, those are going to be pulmonary veins, whereas this one coming off the main pulmonary artery, those are going to be um, pulmonary arteries. So that's kind of the heart. You're also going to be looking for any type of pericardial fusion and any pneumomediastinum, which is a, a, a little bit of um, here. But again, trauma patient, it's kind of goes along with, with the territory of this person's specific injury. So once I do that, I'll go through all the lymph nodes. And there's many different lymph node stations. I'll have an entire separate video of that. But essentially, they're going to follow the trachea as well as the vasculature. We'll look at the lymph nodes in the axillary stations over here. Um, and then that will kind of give us pretty much a good picture of everything else. You're also going to want to look not only at the ascending aorta, but you're going to want to come down and look at the descending thoracic aorta and then whatever is left in the abdomen. So primarily what you're seeing of what I'm describing, although I was jumping around slightly, is you're going to be looking at the heart in all of the major structures, including the lymph nodes, the vessels, the pericardium, and any other soft tissue structures or masses. And there's a lot of things within the mediastinum, so that's why I'll have an entire separate video just for that. After I've kind of looked at both the thyroid and then anything in the mediastinum, what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to look at the soft tissues. So soft tissues, I'll kind of go up and down in each of the different quadrants, go up and down, and then go through all the different quadrants, okay? And so that will give me an idea if there's any type of laceration, if there's any soft tissue swelling, things like that. After that, what you're going to do is you're going to change it to bone window. So there's different windows um, for every single thing that you want to look at. I was in a soft tissue window before, which is good for either, you know, obviously soft tissues, but also the major organs as well. So here what I'm looking for is when I look for rib fractures, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow things based off of either anterior, medial, and posterior. So I'm going to make a pass through everything. So first off, I'll go to anterior. So here, any type of cortical irregularity like that, that's going to be your fracture. And that was one that we knew about. And something that is much more um, sharp. There's no new bony ossification. That's going to be more ind indicative of an acute fracture. So that first pass I did in the anterior, now I'm going to go in the lateral. And all I'm doing is I'm focusing my eyes right on this lateral chest wall. I'm not following the ribs as they go up. I'm literally just looking here and having my eyes fixed and having everything scroll. So my eyes are looking exactly, well, essentially where, where my mouse is. And I'll do the same thing with the posterior, go up and down, up and down. As soon as I find some type of deformity and I need to find, oh, well, what does the rest of the rib look like? Then I'll specifically follow that rib and figure out uh, what it looks like, especially as it comes back to the vertebral bodies or if it uh, goes anteriorly to the sternum. So I'll do that on both sides. And then while I'm doing that, I'll oftentimes look at the bones on the sagittal plane. All right, so while we're on bones, I'm going to show you the sagittal window in terms of what this can be useful for. So vertebral bodies are going to be uh, very useful on a, on a um, sagittal chest CT. So here you're going to be looking for any type of wedge deformities uh, primarily, any type of vertebral compression fractures. The other thing that you're going to want to be uh, keeping a close eye on is the sternum. So sternal fractures are very easy to miss, but the sagittal plane is where you're going to be looking at it easiest. 
here, this guy right here is going to be your clavicle. So oftentimes clavicle fractures you can see here. Um, and in addition, you're going to be wanting to look at your ribs. So you can kind of just follow your ribs um, here and you can do the same exact thing when you uh, do a coronal plane. So if we see here, oh, there's a defect right here and that's the same rib fracture that uh, we've been aware of. So I kind of just follow through like that and when I look at these vertebral bodies and I'm scrolling through you might think oh am I looking at all of them at once and the answer is no because it's going to be very difficult to look at every single one all in the same as you're scrolling from left to right. So when I'm going for one side, when I'm going to the right side, um, then I'm going to be looking just at this top half or even top third and then I'll scroll back still looking just at the top third, then the middle third and then finally the, the bottom third. And so while I'm still on the subject of bones, what you're going to want to do is also look at these bones on a coronal plane. And so you can see here, very easy to see the fracture of that first rib right here. You see that cortical defect. Um, and then here you can also see sternal fractures as well. And this will help you see a, a good look at all of the posterior ribs, specifically the posterior ribs. It's a little bit harder to see any of the other ribs, especially with the, the cartilage, but that's a good way to look at the posterior um, bones and also the scapula. You can look at the scapula here and here, and then also for potentially any humeral fracture or clavicular fracture. Last thing you wanna do is miss a clavicular fracture on a CT scan, it's be pretty obvious, oftentimes very easy to miss. So now I'm back to the axial and it almost looks like I'm jumping around but really I'm looking at specific organs rather than specific uh, sequences or planes. Um, I'm more focused on the actual organs and there's certain planes that are going to uh, allow you to see those uh, deformities easier. So for example when I was going through the bones, I was going through the bones here and then I was looking on a coronal plane and sagittal plane so that I don't forget later on to look at them. You can easily look at all the axial images first, do all the organs and then do the bones and, and whatnot and then go to coronal, do all the same thing and go to sagittal. That's another way to do it. This one I was just trying to show you kind of in a more systematic way of what you may be looking for on each of these different planes. In addition, I looked at everything else but the lungs and airways because the lungs and the airways are the things that are going to be the first thing that we're going to want to see. It's going to be the probably the most important reason why you get a CT scan of the chest. So you'll see that I've kind of been jumping around between different planes and the reason why I'm doing that is to show you that these specific sequences or these specific planes can be utilized to your advantage rather than just looking all over the place on each of the planes. You can easily go through you know, all the soft tissues, all the bones, the lung, the mediastinum on axial and then do the same thing for corona, same thing for sagittal and that's fine as well. But in addition, if you're kind of crunched for time, there's certain things that are better seen on corona, certain things are better seen on sagittal and certain things are better seen on axial that you really want to focus on. So that's what I was showing you with that right there. Also, I saved the lungs and the airways for last because that's typically the thing that we want to look at the most. But if you look at that first, then oftentimes what you'll do is you'll forget to look at everything else. And so it's, it's important to not forget about some of the other things. So when I'm looking for looking at the lungs, I'm going to be doing a similar thing that I did when I was dealing with the ribs is I broke it into three. So anterior, middle and posterior, my eyes will stay still roughly right here. This is what my eyes are looking at this whole time. So I, I can see this whole thing, then I go down and then I come back up and I'll do the same exact thing on both sides. So I'll break it up in three because it's going to be very difficult to see everything all at once. If you just want a global look at things, that's perfectly fine and you eventually need to look at it in a global sense bilaterally. But if you're looking for you know small things, for example, small nodules or masses that you don't want to miss, that's how we how, that's how we look for them. The same thing is you're going to be looking for uh, looking at the airways, making sure going down the trachea, uh, right and left main stem bronchi, and then going to um, you know all the the tributaries as well. I'll talk about those when I actually talk about PEs because the arteries and the airways follow each other. So that's pretty much the way that I approach 
these CT scans. There's other things that I look at that's a little bit more in detail, obviously. But this, if you just want a quick overview of how you look at a, a CT scan in a systematic way, but also in a somewhat efficient way, this is kind of my general approach. More videos to come that will talk about each individual parts like I was mentioning. Be sure to check out our website, medicalbasics.com, for more educational resources like our medical ID cards, scrub notes, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more tips and lessons.